Hi, I'm Zach with HKN. Um, today we're going to do a little um, example of convolution um, in continuous time as opposed to discrete time. Maybe we'll do a discrete time example sometime. Um, not today. But um, so first we'll talk a little bit about why exactly we have to do convolution. Um, it, it's, as we'll see, it, it gets to be some really long integrals involved and whatnot, but it's important. So. OK, so the idea is that we have um, a, a system with an input and an output. I mean, that's, that's kind of the definition of a system. Um, and let's say that we've done some experimentation or some good modeling. And let's say we know one thing about the system. Let's say we know what it outputs when we input as x of t. Um, if our input is a, an impulse function, um, now, this, this impulse function is uh, a theoretical function. Um, the idea is that it's infinitely tall, it's infinitesimally wide, and when you integrate over it, it will integrate to 1. So those are just some mathematical properties we've come up, with, uh, come up for for this. Um, and as we'll see, it helps us. Um, it's theoretical, but it helps us do practical things. So let's say we know um, what the system outputs when we put this in. Um, and let's say, in this case, that this system is going to output function. Let's say that this system outputs a function that can be modeled as, um, OK, so this is what we'd call impulse response. We put in an impulse. This is a response we get for putting an impulse. And it's usually denoted h of t. And I'm picking this arbitrarily. I'm saying, suppose this system outputs this for an impulse. Um, let's call this 2 times e to the negative t. Uh, that's that's a actually practical impulse response we see from systems. From, yeah, from some system. So this would you know, start at 2 and exponentially die down. OK, so given that we know this, um, the idea of convolution is that we can take any input xt and this impulse response, and we can get the output for any input. So let's say that, um, let's say that our x of t, let's come up with an arbitrary x of t and see if we can do this. So let's say that for, for our input now, we will give it a function that looks something like this. Um, let's say that this discontinuity here happens at t equals 1, and then it goes up to a height of 1. So we're going to have to describe x as a, as a piecewise function um, eventually for doing the actual integration. But um, so what? conceptually kind of do we do here? What we do is we treat x, this input, as if it's a bunch of consecutive impulses. We say we theoretically break x up into infinitely many impulses, all scaled by the value of x all the way across. And we are shoving those impulses into this system. And we'll get a combination of these impulse responses. Well, if we put a bunch of impulses in, we're going to get a bunch of impulses re responses out. Um, and they're going to be added together. Um, without getting into the, uh, you know, the, the proof of it, what this results in is that our, our output here is going to equal the, um, it's the integral from negative infinity up to infinity. Of OK, so we're going to introduce a dummy variable tau. Um, we want to, actually, I'll just write out the, uh, the statement first. So this is going to be h of tau, our dummy variable, times x of our input of t minus tau. And we're going to integrate over tau. 
So it's a little bit hard to picture why we use this dummy variable, but the idea is that we're integrating over time to get a function in time, right? So we have to introduce. We don't. We wouldn't want to. We wouldn't want to call these both t because we're only integrating over one of them. So um, just just roll with that for a bit, and we'll see how it works. Um, so this is going to give us our output y of t for any x of t that we can come up with. So let's. Um, so we already defined h of t. Let's briefly define x of t explicitly. So we could say that um, x of t, we arbitrarily came up with this, but we'll try to describe it as a function. So let's see. Before, we're going to go ahead and assume this x of t starts at t equals 0, right? Like over here, we got nothing. So, so x of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0, right? Um, x of t is equal to, well, what, is, what would this function be? This, just from 0 to 1, that function would be just t, right? We have um, at any value t, the, the function is also equal to that value. So, so x of t is equal to t for um, t greater than 0 and less than 1. And then we see it just kind of levels out, and we're going to assume this kind of just goes, you know, on for eternity. Um, we see it's equal to one for uh, for t greater than one. So we have to figure out how to do this integration operation here with this h of t and this x of t, and um, it's going to turn out that. Let's think about what this this statement actually is kind of saying. Um, if we drew our, our dummy variable axis tau, um, we'll pick a zero point here. Now, so h of tau is um, pretty straightforward, right? H, if we just plug in tau for t, we'd get 2e to the negative tau. So we could graph that on our tau axis pretty easily. So that's our h of tau. And now what is x of t minus tau? Um, we could think of this as a, so we could right shift by, so remember that this t is not a variable in this case. Um, we could right shift, uh, I'm sorry, left shift by this t, and then it's of negative tau, right? So we would mirror it around the y-axis. We would flip it like that. Um, so let's see what that looks like. So we, actually let's draw that in red. So our original x function looks something like that. Let's, let's left shift by t and then mirror it. And what would that give us? It would give us something that looks like this and then this original zero point of our function is at t, right? Is that more or less? Yeah. So we're gonna um, we're gonna have to erase the board here, but we're gonna see that this integration. So we're taking the the product of these two functions with x flipped like this, and we're gonna do the integration. Since we have a piecewise function here, we're gonna have a couple different regions where we uh, where the integration is gonna have different values. So. Um, we're going to erase the board a couple times here and, and do out the integration, but um, this is a good visualization of what's going on here. So, so we will deal with that right now. So now we have this um, this dummy variable axis set up with um, one of our functions, just graph normally, and one of our functions um, shifted and mirrored around the um, around the vertical axis. So. So we're going to, for there's a couple, OK, so remember what the convolution um, operation actually was. It was, um, we said y of t was equal to integral um, over all values of the product of our impulse response and our input shifted and flipped, right? So. 
So we can think of set it, setting t this um, this t to be different values, right? We could it's a it's we're not integrating over it, so we can kind of just put it anywhere we want, and we can see that. So in this case, we have zero, and t is less than zero here, right? So what would happen to this expression when t is less than zero? Just from our graph of our situation here, we would see that their product, right? Um, our, our impulse response is 0 over here, and this function is ze um, our input is 0 on this side, right? So the product of them is 0 everywhere, right? So that, so in our first case here, we kind of get the, the quick answer that um, y of t is equal to 0 any time t is less than 0, for t less than 0. OK, so that's one part of our integration. Now let's imagine that we, we shift t a little bit. Let's make it, I'll redraw it here. Yeah, that one is much better. So, so this is our zero point. We will have our, our impulse response still graphed normally. And let's shift t so that it's just a little bit bigger than zero. Um, let's say that we shift t so that it is in between 1 and 0. Actually, let's mark 1 as well. Let's say 1 would be around there. One. Now we're going to put t somewhere in here. t. Um, and now our shifted function look, would look something like this. OK. so. So the reason we limited t in between 0 and 1 here is because we can see as if we slide t up to 1, um, we would get our, our function fitting just perfectly in here like that. And the discontinuity would be at 0. And then we'll see that at, when t is greater than 1, then our, um, our integration becomes a little bit different. But let's do the integration for this where t is in between 0 and 1. So. Um, this, so we have to integrate the product of these functions, right, from um, negative infinity to infinity. Now, again, over here, the product is still 0, right? And then also, we'll see our flipped function here is 0 after t, right? So for t, uh, for any tau greater than t, the product of these functions is also 0. So the integration only has to be done. So we'll say for t, actually, yeah, for t greater than 0 and less than 1, our, our y of t is going to equal the integration from, well, we'll start with negative infinity to infinity of, um, so, well, we can do h of tau is 2 times e to the negative tau. And then we're going to multiply that by our shifted and so what was so what oh remember what was x of t for t it, t in between zero and one it was just t right so for so now x of t minus tau is just going to be t minus tau and then we're integrating over our dummy variable tau right um, yeah. okay so. Um, I could, I could do the integration out. I did it on a piece of paper earlier. Um, it's good practice. So actually, I'll, I'll expand it a little bit to just to make it a little bit easier for you. So um, remember what we talked about. We can change these limits. We don't have to do from negative infinity to infinity. We really, it only has in here. We only have a non-zero value between zero and t. So we can. Simplify this a little bit. We can say this is the integral between 0 and t of this expression. We can actually move, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's move the 2 out here. So then we have e to the negative tau times t minus tau. d tau. And um, yeah, we could expand that one more time, I guess. 
you get that this is the integral as well this is two times integral from zero to t of um, actually it's yeah yeah it'd be negative tau e to the negative tau d tau are splitting our integration up into two separate terms now right because we have we'd have to distribute this e to the negative tau to both places in there and then this is plus um, yep this is plus 2t integral from 0 to t of e to the negative tau, right? Now, um, so, so I'm not going to do any further integration here. I'm going to expect that um, you can do the workout. And actually, you know, if, if you have time, take the time to do it out and, um, and check my answer here. What I have for an answer for this part is, is equal to, um, actually let's write it in a different color as our final function here. So I have a 2 times e to the negative tau plus t minus 1. Um, yep. And this is our, our output for our restricted input here. Remember um, we, restricted, uh, we restricted the time domain here. So this is our output for, um, for t greater than 0 and less than 1. OK, so um, take a mental picture or an actual picture of this, because we're going to erase one more time. And we're going to do the final step for when we drag this t value past 1. We're going to have to, we'll see what happens there. So. OK, um, we're back. Uh, Here is our final case for our convolution. Um, so. Previously, up till now, we've restricted um, t to be less than 0. We found our output was 0 for that. And then we found what our function was for t in between um, 0 and 1. Um, and now the, so now the remaining values of t are um, from 1 up to um, infinity, right? Um, so we're going to figure out what our convolution becomes for that. So we have to do this operation here. Um, We've already, so this, is, this pink function here is our x of t, and it's already um, shifted, and shifted by t and flipped um, in this picture here. So we have to do the integration from negative infinity to infinity of the product of the two things we see right here. Um, so we have a little discontinuity here. Um, so we're going to have to kind of break our integration up into two parts. So Let's first say that, um, well, let's integrate the first region here. We have our, our x function is continuous from here to there. Um, and what, what is that? Well, yeah. So again, um, our, our product of these two things are going to be 0 outside these regions, right? Um, anywhere from this, that way from 0, and anywhere that way from t, right? It's gonna, the product is all going to be 0. So. Um, we only have to do our integration from here to there. So how do we set that up? This is going to be, so let's first do the integration from 0. And remember, we can use this t value. We're integrating tau. So we can use this t value as a limit for integration, right? Let's do the integration from 0 to t minus 1 of this. So that would give us. Um, now, what, is, what are our functions here? Um, our, our blue function here is still just 2, two times e to the negative tau. And now, what is our, what is our f, uh, I mean, our x of t for this region? It's constant. It's just 1, right? So, so x of t minus tau doesn't really matter. It's just 1. Just a constant. Um, and then, yep, then we're integrating this over tau. And what do we get? Um, actually, OK, so let's just set up the, other, the rest of the integration, too. Um, we also have to integrate this little region here. Um, so we're going to add to that integration, to this integration. We're going to say this is the integral. Now, what are the limits for this integration? We would go from t minus 1 to t, right? of the product of our, again, our impulse response is still 2. 
e to the negative tau. And now our um, our flip our t x of t minus tau is just again t minus tau for that. Um, and then again, we're integrating this over tau. So now, so this sum here gives us this part is this region, this part is this region, and then like we like we talked about, the rest is going to be zero. So we'll expand this out a little bit. Um, we can keep this, I believe. Actually, let me look at my notes here for a minute. Yeah. So we can expand this all out, equaling two times the integral from zero to t of e to the negative tau. Tau. And again, we have to split this part up into two different integrations, right? Because we have to distribute that in. Um, that, so this would become plus, uh, we'll distribute this in, it'll be 2t times the integral. Remember, t is a constant, so we can just pull it out of the integration. We're going to go from t minus, uh, t minus 1 to t of e to the, e to the negative tau, right? d tau. And then our final term would be from distributing this to the tau. This would be equal to uh, minus 2 integral from t minus 1 to t of tau e to the negative tau d tau. Uh, are you sure? Yep, yep. OK, so previously when I defined this little region here, I said it was 0 to t. It is from here, uh, this part of the integration. OK, so yeah, I put it in up here and just failed later. So this integration is this region from just from 0 to where our x function becomes, where the discontinuity in our x function is. Because there's no way to integrate over this. There's no way to describe this function all the way from here all the way to t as a continuous function. We have to do it piecewise. So, um, so this, um, I'm going to, I mean, it was a lot of work do, <laughs> doing this integration out here. Um, so I'm going to expect that you can do that and maybe, again, cross-check my answer. Now, um, the result I got here, everything here is equal to, is equal to 2 times um, e to the negative tau, uh, e to the negative t, my bad, um, plus, minus, e to the negative t plus 1, uh, plus 1. So remember our restrictions on our t to, or the value of t now. This is for any t that's greater than 1, right? For t greater than 1. e greater than 1. And now, um, real quick, I'll just write out what um, our total y of t is. Our y of t was equal to 0 for t less than 0. It was equal to, um, I believe, two times. It was equal to two times e to the n negative t plus t minus one for t in between zero and one. And finally, it's equal to this for t greater than one. Um, now, if we evaluated this, these, both these functions at 1, they should have the same value at 1. There shouldn't be a discontinuity at 1, so it's for t greater than 1. Um, you could, you could uh, maybe just graph this on a graphing calculator or something and see what it looks like. It'll look, like, it'll look sort of like a step response, um, something, something along those lines. So, so yeah, as you can see, convolution is just a bunch of work. And um, probably at some point, we'll make a video on uh, maybe the, the Fourier transform. Maybe we already have some, but we'll see how that shortens up this, this work we have to do, this integration. So that's it for this week. Thanks.